here we are on the campus of the University of Arizona. What you see in the background behind me there is the University of Arizona's new Jumbotron, multi-million dollar instant replay device that allows fans at the football stadium for the six games each year to see the instant replay of the really exciting stuff. This entire area, all the way as far as you can see into the distance in the camera, used to be Cactus Garden. And since the 1960s, we've converted it all to this monoculture lawn. So we use millions of years old fossil fuels to pull out 10,000 year old groundwater to water this non-native monocultural lawn. What they're teaching is infinite growth on a finite planet. What they're teaching is planetary destruction is a good way to make money. The university is a reflection of culture. Uh, my name is Andy. I'm a returning student. I, uh, I was laid off after the crash in 2008. And I think like a lot of people, I have a house that's underwater. And then I came back to school because I couldn't really find a job that was anywhere close to supplementing the type of income I was making, so I decided to come back to school. So now I have a house that's underwater, and I'm going into, slowly going into massive debt from student loans. Take some time with us today, and I expect you'll get all riled up by the end. Thanks for coming. Well, I hope so. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. <clears throat> Thank you. Please hold all the applause till the end, at which time you won't have any, so we can negate that problem. So it's 1979. Now we're at the year we hit uh, the peak at the world level in terms of oil extraction per capita. And the United States, under the last decent man in the Oval Office, takes the two political actions they could in response to that. One, which we'd been doing for a while, admittedly, was go to war to get oil. And two, now that we've been going to war to get oil, we drill where we've got it. So we, we take the two broad approaches, one known as drill baby drill, we're all familiar with that one, so we drilled in Alaska. Once we passed the US, the US peak in energy extraction, we drilled in Alaska to get more where we could. That didn't ever allow the United States to exceed its previous peak, but allowed us to kick the can down the road a little bit longer. And the second thing we did in addition to drill baby drill is kill baby kill. Under the last decent man in, to occupy the Oval Office, we had what came to be known as the Carter Doctrine. The Carter Doctrine says that with respect to the Middle East, that's our oil over there. In fact, all of the world's resources are one resources. They're on this earth for us, for us human beings, not for anything else. And two, they're ours. They all belong to us, whatever it takes. What do I think about what Guy thinks? I, the most important thing is that Guy makes me think. I think about it all the time. And whether or not I've chosen to go down the path that he has, he has inspired me to really search my soul for how I live, what I can live with, and what I'm going to do about the things I see happening to the resources in this country and what it means for people who don't even live here. Culture says that every generation has things better than the previous generation and by better, culture means having more toys, more economic opportunities, more opportunities in other words to dis destroy every aspect of the living planet. Living in a city was just too much for me after a while. The apex of empire is Tucson, Arizona. I can think of no worse way to live than importing your water from 335 miles away across the desert, uphill. Importing your food from all over the world. Importing your fossil fuels so you can run the air conditioning, and keep the lights on, and then run the heat during the winter time, of course. If cities are inherently unsustainable, and they are, by definition, then Tucson, Arizona is perhaps the least sustainable city on the planet. Well, Las Vegas comes to mind. Seven billion people cannot be sustained on this planet. We're in dire human population overshoot. We've been in overshoot since we established the first civilization several thousand years ago. What's the human carrying capacity of this planet? Well, it depends, 
but it's certainly no more than three billion. It might be no more than 500 million. And, and we're going to that, by the way, and a lot sooner than most people think. How do we mitigate for that? Uh, how, do, how do we ensure that it's a relatively gentle transition from seven billion to 500 million? I don't know that we can. I, I don't think there's much of any way. But I do know that government policies in every country now encourage procreation, or at least don't discourage procreation. And so China just suspended their one-child policy because they realized they need consumers for the future to make their economy go. So if, if, the, if the notion is we always have to have an expanding populace, so we go deeper and deeper into human population overshoot, I don't want to be any part of that. Uh, I want to terminate the industrial economy as rapidly as possible, and I know what that means for the loss of human life and the suffering along the way. I also know what that means in terms of human suffering in the years ahead. When do you want to terminate overshoot? When there's 7 billion? When there's 14 billion? When there's 20 billion? How many people is enough to suffer and die in the future? Birth is fatal. Nobody gets out alive. Let's start now with reducing the human population before we, before we cause the extinction of more than 200 species a day. When is enough?